Carlsbad Caverns is a national park located in southeast New Mexico in the Guadalupe mountain range. The park features a natural entrance that takes you down 750 feet into the cave itself. As you explore, you'll enter a large limestone chamber known as the Big Room. This room itself has over a mile worth of trails and it's the largest cave room by volume in North America. Needless to say, this is one of the coolest national parks in the entire country. Here's how I spent a half day exploring Carlsbad Caverns National Park. To start our adventure, we left from the town of Carlsbad, which is about 25 minutes from Carlsbad National Park. I planned to get there before they opened as I wanted to be on the first tour into the cave. All right, we made it at 7.45. There's already a pretty significant line, so hopefully it doesn't take us too long to get on the tour. Because of COVID regulations, they were limiting the amount of people in the cave, but we were able to get the first time slot to enter. So this is what we do. We walk down the natural entrance and then you come into the cave all the way through the main corridor down into the big room down here and that is where you can take the elevator back up. Since we had a little bit of time to wait before we were able to enter the cave, we walked around the visitor center and read about the exhibits on the cave itself and the bats that live in it. So during the summer, the bats fly out of the cave every night. This photo, I don't know if you can see it, but look at all those bats coming out of the cave. All right, so it's about a five minute walk to the natural entrance this direction. I'm gonna walk down there and then I'm able to go in at 8.30. After listening to a talk from the ranger about safety, bats, and the cave, we were able to begin our journey into Carlsbad Caverns. 66 switchbacks and 750 feet down into the cave below us. Check out all these bats. This is the coolest thing ever. We got bats coming out as we're descending into the cave. I had seen photos of this area before and the long switchbacks to get down into the cave, but there's something incredible about being able to walk down into this impressive cave yourself. This is especially true as you get closer to the bottom and the light starts to fade from that single hole that it's coming in on. I have officially made it into the cave. We're almost at the bottom of the entrance area. You can see the light, just a little bit of light coming in as we head back. I thought we were heading that direction, but I guess we're going into the abyss right here. Look at that smoke coming up. We are now entering the dark zone since we're going away from the natural light of the cave and into the darkness. A little bit of water in here and you can hear the drips. During this part of the adventure, I was basically just by myself walking down into the cave and looking at all the formations that kept popping out in front of me. Get all that water down there. Still going down. This one is known as Whale's Mouth. Do you see it? It's a lot of downhill. Got all those switchbacks still. There's Whale's Mouth right there. You can see how far we've come down already. A few more switchbacks to go. Even though I looked at the map before I came down here to see all of the switchbacks and all of the descent that we had to do to get to the cave, I was still shocked by the fact that we just kept going down. The cave never really felt claustrophobic because it's pretty much always big and open. Wow. 
I'm sure the videos in this section don't really do it justice, but you'll be blown away dozens of times when you're walking through the caverns. Look at this room. So crazy. Since it's relatively dark most of the time, I found it really cool to be able to see people in front of you using their flashlight as it helped you to understand the scale of the caverns. Man, every turn, it just keeps getting better. This is incredible. I don't know if you can see that, but we are still going downhill. During this part of the hike, you're in a large main corridor as you continue to make your way farther down into the caverns. I should note that I spent about three hours underground to do this entire thing. We're entering into the Green Lake Room. I don't know why it's called the Green Lake Room. I don't see any lake, but it might be an area we can't access. The Green Lake area is something you can only see via a ranger guided tour. We are here by Iceberg Rock. The elevators are over here, so we're actually pretty close to the elevators, I guess. This rock right here is called Iceberg Rock. Iceberg Rock actually fell into this area and they dated these things and think that it's over a half million years old. That's Iceberg Rock right there that fell. And then there's those things we were looking at. Some type of emergency exit out of the cave or something. Oh, this is the old entrance from 1926. Right there. After passing this area, you'll cross about a mile and a quarter that you've already walked in the cave. The sign says that the area back there is called sponge work, and it could be from the development of the cave via sulfuric acid. This is easily one of the most amazing national park experiences I've ever had because of COVID. There's no tours, so you get to go by yourself, and I basically have had this cave to myself the entire time. They did let a group in about every 30 minutes, but the cave's so big it never felt like there were any people. I don't think the lights are on for that one. I don't really see it. All right, so we made it to the big room, and then it's another mile and a quarter to get back to the elevator, or you can just leave from here and you can go back up. But we're gonna do the whole tour, so 1.2 miles left to end of tour. The big room route. Once you make it to the big room, you're about halfway through your hike and you're about to experience what I thought was the most amazing part of the national park. Also, if you don't feel like doing the hike to get here, you can always just take the elevator down and just experience this section. This video is never gonna do justice to how amazing this area is, but this is the big room that we're in crazy how massive it is and how many formations there are everywhere you look. Check it out, that stalactite and stalagmite are almost connected. Wow, look at what we are heading into. Oh my gosh. I had no idea what to expect when I came into the big room. I thought what I had seen already was impressive, but this blew everything I had seen before it away. I've been in a lot of caves in the United States and nothing even remotely compares to the big room. I think this may be the coolest formation we've seen right here. <laughs> Look at that. I feel like when I'm in this cave, I'm in like the Lord of the Rings. This is just absolutely insane. This next area of the big room we entered into was one of the best and it was called the Hall of the Giants. This area is called Fairyland, and <laughs> it definitely looks like Fairyland with all this crazy stuff on the ground. And then check out what's on the ceiling. This is a better view of the Fairyland area. I had another place I was heading to in the afternoon, so I didn't get to spend as much time in this area as I would like, but honestly, you could spend days down here and still not see everything. It's absolutely overwhelming in a good way how much there is to experience. All right, we made it to the cutoff area. Still have to go back to the bottomless pit and the top of the cross, then out the elevator. If you're on a time constraint, from here you can actually cut across and head back to the elevator without doing the rest of the loop. There's a picture of somebody climbing 
right next to that spire from I guess in there probably a little bit more water in the cave down here check out that old ladder they used to use I like caves but I don't think I would have gone in if it looked like that Most of the big room area is wheelchair accessible. There are a few sections you can't use a wheelchair in, but the rangers in the visitor center can tell you all about that if you're coming with a wheelchair. This one kind of looks like an eye right here. We have made it to the top of the cross, and then the big room goes that way. The top of the cross is a great area to just sit and relax and take in the cave. There's lots of seating here and supposedly the area was named after the rock formations in the ceiling that the original discoverers thought looked like angels. From here the next major point of interest was the bottomless pit. You can't really see this, it's way too dark, but that is a crazy dark pit down there. This part of the cave is a lot darker than the first half of the big room, so you can't really see much in here. It says these are massive blocks of gypsum, which is the sand for White Sands National Park. While this second portion of the big room after the bottomless pit is still cool, it pales in comparison to the first section of the big room. As you get closer to the elevator, it opens back up again and you get to see some of the best formations from the other side. This is a Crystal Spring Dome is what it's called. Definitely one of the coolest formations we've seen. It's crazy how many of these amazing formations they have in this cave as each of these by themselves could be a highlight in some of the other caves in the United States. This is the Rock of Ages. Also, just to state again, this video will never do it justice. You have to experience it for yourself. Right around this creek area, it says we're about 10 minutes from the elevator. I soaked in the last 10 minutes of my journey before getting in line and waiting for my turn to take the elevator back to the surface. There's the route we just took. Absolutely awesome. Made it out of Carlsbad Caverns. That was easily one of my top three national parks. That entire experience was incredible. If you can come out here, definitely check it out. It's an amazing cave. That's it for this video. We'll see you on the next one.